What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 167 of the Games and Grass podcast. My name is Sonny G, and I am here as always with Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Very good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. That is a big cup of brown that you've got there. Is that it brown? Is. It is. It's a latte. It's like cow- no, vanilla latte. Vanilla latte, very mm, nice. Fancy. <laughs> For my Tassimo machine. <laughs> I love that you just got all this equipment in your in your little space. I do, yeah. It's crammed full. I'm winning, winning a bit out of space, but it's all right. All the important <laughs> stuff. All the important stuff. Gaming, coffee, coffee and bed. Yeah, that's all, that's all we need. Fridge. Yeah, it's literally all you need. Yeah. yeah. Fridge, yeah, of course, yeah. Toaster, just in case kettle. you need to eat food maybe at some point during the course of a day. Maybe, maybe every now and then, yeah. Once every couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> once, once every couple of days. <laughs> Um, I like the hoodie, by the way. Thank you. I got this for uh, my birthday. Very nice. Yeah. Your 50th like birthday. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 35. Can you believe it? I can't believe it, to be honest. I mean, we've known each other for a long time now. We have, actually, yeah. Long time. This is our first yeah. assist days. Yeah. <laughs> no one who listens to this podcast is going to have any idea what that is. No. It's a call centre. Yeah, Basically. we me and Finn used to work in a call center together back in the day. That's how we know each other. Um, yeah, and then I text Finn one day saying, "Hey, do you still play video games?" And he's like, "Yeah, do you still watch wrestling?" I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. And he's like, and like, we were like, "Oh, let's let's do a podcast." And here we are, 167 <laughs> stupid episodes later, <laughs> still going strong, still going strong. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So third podcast of the year, I think. Third. Uh, yeah, third sounds right. Yeah, yeah, we're going strong. This yeah. is a good, solid start to the year for us. I've got no, no, no plans on slowing up. No, me neither. It's fun. I like. I'm enjoying doing it. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, me too. And uh, I like. Well, I'm happy that everybody who listens to it is enjoying it as well. Yes. Uh, last week's episode went over well, which I'm glad about. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Uh, even though it was the dumbest bit we've ever done, <laughs> easily the dumbest bit we've ever. Oh, we've done some stupid stuff over the years, Jesus. But that was, you know, right up there with the stupidest of stupid stuff. It was. It's funny though. Funny stupid. Oh yeah, definitely funny stupid. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've not, I've not put it on TikTok yet. I need to do that. I oh need yeah. To cut need... it out and put it on TikTok. Yeah, I'll cut it out later and I'll send it to you. Okay, yeah, and then I'll put it on TikTok and uh, we'll go stupid viral with our goat phone call. <laughs> you better. Billy Bear. It deserves it. So much planning went into that. Like three minutes of planning went into that. <laughs> yeah, three minutes. I had to cut out the clips. It took at least five minutes. Gah. Yeah, I, I, I thought, oh, this will be funny. I'm going to message Finn. So I messaged Finn. And Finn was like, yeah, sounds stupid. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> that's how we plan this podcast. Yeah, pretty much. I have Just this- a text. Oh, here's a stupid idea. Want to do it? Yep. Yep. Works for me. <laughs> yeah. That's what. Uh, that's how we do it. That's how we roll. That's how we've always rolled. Yeah, it's not going to change. <laughs> no, anytime soon. No. <laughs> Why change a winning formula? Exactly. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, that's it. That is it. Um, I was going to before we get cracking. Here, I just want to run through some dates. Okay. So um, I've got three wrestling weekends coming up now. So if you're in any of these places, come and watch some local wrestling. Come and say hi to me. So uh, Sunday the 29th, I'm in Coventry at the HMV Empire for Wrestle Carnival. And that's going to be incredible. Nice. That's going to be really good. You can go to thewrestlecarnival.com and get your tickets from there. Excellent. The weekend after that, I'm uh, in Telford for APW, uh, where former WWE superstar slash trainer Scotty Too Hotty will be there. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, you can get your tickets at apwprowrestling.com. Uh, then the week after, I'm in Tipton doing commentary for Black Country Championship Wrestling. Uh, that is on Friday the 10th of February. And you can get your tickets at bccw2021.com. Excellent. And if you go to any of them places, come and say hello to me. I'll be there. Yeah. You can redeem your ticket for one high five. I'm Sunny. You can, yeah. You can redeem your Games and Graps listen for one high five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I feel that's a fair trade. It is. Very fair. Nothing get that. more than a high five. You can say hello. I won't say hello back, but I will just extend my <laughs> arm up for a high five. Yeah. Just one, though. 
One burger. Yeah, yeah, don't don't take the piss. Yeah, don't go for the double high five. That's too much. Don't be like, I've listened to 167 episodes of this crap. Can you can I have 167 high fives? That's not how it works. Yeah, sorry. One high five per 167 listens. Exactly. <laughs> then, Which I think is only fair. Yeah, and then another one in the 65 episodes, you can get another one. Yeah. Yeah. One per time that you see me. Yeah, there we go. I, I feel that's fair. That sounds fair to me. There we go. Deal. <laughs> don't say we never give you anything yeah we give you laughs and high fives should you see us out and about in person and nothing else that's it and absolutely nothing else yeah and you're welcome you're very welcome <laughs> <laughs> um, be sure to check out this week's episode of Added Time I am a special guest on there I'm going to be talking to Steve about well football you know, sports because that's what the podcast is about football. Yeah, so yeah, go yeah. check out this week's episode and all the other episodes of Added Time, and then maybe Steve will give you a high five if you see him out. Yeah, if you're lucky, I won't though. I won't. Nothing else, just a high five. I won't. Don't touch me. Don't don't approach me. Don't speak to me. Just yeah, don't touch me. I'm joking. Of course, <laughs> no no hi, no high fives from Finn. No touching. Yeah, don't, don't touch. Don't even look at me. Don't just stay away. Yeah, no hellos, <laughs> no high fives, no touching. Nothing. <laughs> I'm joking. Of course. Come say hi. I'll only I'll ever see Finn out. Yeah, I don't leave the house. But if if you know, in the rare instance I might leave. Come say hi. You're gonna start seeing hands come through the letterbox. <laughs> yeah, hi Finn. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the that the thing from Elf? <laughs> Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> you know, like, hey Finn. Hope you find my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll open my I'll open my blinds one day and I'll be like squinny, pressed up against the glass. Yeah, <laughs> you'll open the blinds one day. There'll just be hordes of people with their hands up, like a cult, weird Finn cult. Yeah, I love it. And I sort of hope that happens now. Me too. Pretty really cool, actually. And also weird at the same time. Kind of weird, but I like it. Just open your window and put your hand out, and let people walk past and high five. Don't actually go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Like, then yeah, no germs. It's great. What's my hand exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I have a squirt of hand gel after every high five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so, Finn. Hello. What have you been playing? Uh, well, I finally, after all these years, finished and platinumed God of War Ragnarok on PS5. Congratulations. Thank you. High five. Yes, high five. Uh, and two. also a round of applause. Is it many high fives all at once? Here we go. I was really excited about that high five back there. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so now that you've finished it and you've got the platinum for it, let's have the, the final definitive spoiler-free review. Uh, well, the finale was really, really cool. I made up for a lot of uh, uh, transgressions. Uh, but no, it was really really enjoyable finale. It became everything, you know, it lived up to uh, the hype. Uh mm. Uh, yeah, it just it just felt pretty bloated. I'm not gonna lie. It felt like it could have been like ten hours shorter. I found it going to PSN. I spent seventy hours playing it. I don't, I don't seventy know. hours. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's accurate. Probably more like fifty or sixty, but it felt long. It felt like it could have been shorter. Um, but like, what were you doing for seventy hours? It can be done in like forty-five. The platinum, can't it? Just through the thoughts, there. I don't know. Just going around on my boat, collecting stuff. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was a good game. I did, I did end up enjoying it quite a lot. It's just the puzzles were what annoyed me the most. It was it's just like every five minutes you kill some enemies since the puzzle. It's like I throw my axe at the thing, and then go over there, do this thing, okay, and carry on fighting another and that group of enemies. Okay, another puzzle, throw my axe at the thing. Okay, shoot the arrow at the thing, make make it set on fire, burn the things. Okay, <laughs> move on, move forward. Um, but other than that, I did really enjoy it. I did end up enjoying it quite a lot. So good. Yeah, really good. Out of ten? Um, eight. Okay. Eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, hey, look, that's a fair review. A solid eight, yeah. That's not a bad review. No, not at all. It's a good review. Good review. Eight out of ten? It's, it is a good review. Great, yeah. Um, I've not been on my PlayStation all week, so I've not played mm. it. Fair. But I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. It's all good. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, no, I will. I will. I mean, absolutely <laughs> no rush, though. No, that's fair. Too busy collecting Microsoft rewards every day, <laughs> religiously, like some sort of fucking zombie. Yeah, same. 
it's 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 addictive because you just see the points go up and you say oh, i can buy all these things now and get free game pass get free five pound yeah. vouchers it's great yeah 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 <laughs> It's a, it's just, it's awesome. I love that. I love it. Yeah, I wish uh, PlayStation Stars was more like that, rather than what you. Well, you know, hang on. You mean you don't want some sort of crap <laughs> NFT collectible bollocks that means absolutely nothing <laughs> to anyone? Uh, not really. I mean, I still get them because they're easy to get. And they're on my little shelf thing, which nobody ever sees. Um, yeah, I don't really understand the point of it. I just think it's well, a pointless actually. I, that's it. Yeah, if it showed up on the console, like in your PSN profile, that might be pretty cool. But it's like just on the app. It's, no one I know looks at the app. <laughs> Who's going to be able to swipe <laughs> on the app? Nobody. No one. Uh, Literally nobody. Yeah. But you do get a few <clears throat> coins, which you can like redeem towards things, but you get so few compared to Microsoft points. And you do get like 10% or something like coins back when you buy things on uh, PSN. Is that something, mm-hmm. I guess? Sure. But yeah, nobody near as good as Microsoft Awards. Yeah, I think if you buy stuff, if you buy Xbox games from the Microsoft Store as opposed to the Xbox Store on the console, you get reward points for that as well. Oh, okay. Interesting. Worth noting if you ever need to buy anything. Yeah. Hmm. I've bought a few, few things. I normally buy them with vouchers <clears throat> using points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And why not? Yeah, exactly. It's free. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you might as well just do it. Yeah. But no, really cool. Good times. Yeah. It's like so much you can do. Like I showed you the shopping one you can do, like play a shopping game. Yeah. <laughs> it's very basic. Yeah, it's so, so like, which one is which one which one costs less? Yeah. Well, out of three items. <laughs> a sh- you know, a shoe, a golf caddy, and a fucking microwave. <laughs> <laughs> just one shoe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just one shoe, you don't get the pair. That's why it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good times. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> what, um, you say Platinum God of War, good stuff. What else yeah. have you been playing? Uh, I started uh, No More Heroes on PS3 again, which is really fun. Okay. Um, completely crazy. It's made by Studio 51, who made uh, other crazy games like uh, Lollipop Chainsaw, uh, Killer is Dead, Killer 7 on PS2, and GameCube. Um, just a bunch of crazy stuff. It's really, really fun. Um, completely wacky and crazy and Japanese. Um, you sure? <laughs> okay. There's a lot of wrestling stuff in it as well, which is very cool. You can perform wrestling moves oh, okay. as you fight. And you can collect new new moves as you go. Um, so I've got a lot of time for that. Like yeah. games that incorporate wrestling moves. And there's a lot of them, to be fair. Yeah. Like Saints Row was ridiculous for it. Yeah. Not the new Saints Row, the Saints Rows before it. Yeah, that's cool. But um, yeah, you get like brain busters, you get German suplexes, you got tombstone pile drivers out of nowhere. It's very cool. There you go. It's because <laughs> wrestling it. is the world. It is. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, but like basically, you're a nerdy assassin trying to get trying to be a, the best assassin in the world. Um, you collect t-shirts. I collect one t-shirt, which is great. It's a pair. I'll put it on Twitter. But it's um, a lady's uh, chest with the bikinis up on. It just says "Love Tits." That's all it is. Nice. <laughs> best t-shirt in the game. Uh, <laughs> and also factual. Yeah, yeah, factual. Um, because who doesn't love <laughs> tits? Exactly. <laughs> the sword is like Jesus Christ. It's very Japanese, and I love it. Uh, <laughs> it's so Japanese, the most Japanese, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of wrestling, <laughs> wrestling uh, two shirts on there as well, like Lucha Seven So, which is pretty cool. Super Lucha, remember that guy? Yeah, I like. I like him. I miss him. Yeah, I think he got deported. Oh, did he? Oh, that's just him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll get him back on on here someday. Like via Skype or something, like via satellite. Yeah. Like, in wrestling. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be good to catch up with him, actually, see how he is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's that. Um, what else? What is something else I've been playing? More Rocket League, obviously. Of course. Can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Um, there's something on... Oh, Dark Cloud, of course. I'm just dreaming, which is a lot of fun. A PS2 game. Yeah. Yeah, still going through that. Still enjoying it? Yeah, a lot of fun. The bosses are a bit weird. Uh, very basic. Um like the last one I thought, the site is like homing attack, which seems to just hit you from anywhere. I couldn't figure it out until I figured out you can just stand behind a pillar and it wouldn't hit you. I just kept poking out the pillar, shooting it a few times, going back, shooting, poking back, just back and forth. <laughs> At the beginning of that way, it doesn't move either, so it just ended up being super easy. Um, classic PS2, bo- um, PS2 boss. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's been really fun. And uh, I think that's about it. 
Don't forget the Let's hefty see. one hour that you put into Broken Age. Oh, yeah, for points. For 250 Microsoft <laughs> points. Basically, I just I turned it on, left my, left my Xbox on for an hour, and that was it. <laughs> I actually played an hour. Points. Oh, yeah, any good? Yes, actually, it is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I don't really understand it. <laughs> um, okay. The story's really bizarre, but um, the 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 art style is is lovely. To be fair, yeah. voice acting is is good. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a weird point and click game. But it's it's fine. Cool. It's made by Double Fine, I believe. Same guys I made. Yes. Like Psychonauts and games like that. Yeah, they make good games. Yeah. They make weird games. So yeah, that Makes fits sense. the bill. Very not very yeah very well actually. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for me. How about yourself? Um, I've been playing Retromania Wrestling because I'm working my way through to that thousand gamer score, which I'm literally just one achievement off now. Nice. Um, a few more playthroughs of the ten pounds of gold, and I'll have that. Um, I've been playing uh, High on Life. Ah, cool, excellent. On X- I've been rinsing my Xbox. I've just been obsessed with it at the minute. Just like every time I game, because I've recently sort of discovered Dolby Vision. Oh yeah, I feel like not enough people speak about that. It's such a good because PS5 doesn't have that unfortunately, but if your TV no, supports Dolby Vision, um, it is well worth you know, playing that on your Xbox. Turning turning it, I'll basically leave HDR on the entire time I play on my Xbox, which enables Dolby Vision. And so for yeah. every game I've played, it looks noticeably better, like the colors, yes, it does, yeah, more vibrant and just hard to explain it. It just looks better. I mean, it it does look notably better, like yeah. you said. It's. I mean, I played Forza Horizon 5, which is a phenomenal looking game anyway. Mm. But with Dolby Vision on, it's like, whoa, okay. It's insane. This is crazy good. Like, HDR 10, yeah, it's great. But Dolby Vision is like above and beyond it. Yeah, I think what it's doing, I've been into it because I'm a nerd. It's basically adding more colors into the palette. So as before, it's been like you have light blue, blue, dark blue. You'd have light blue, slightly dark, slightly darker light blue blue uh, yeah in basic terms um so you get like a wider color palette it's what's going on mm-hmm. and it's really noticeable yeah. i like it a lot it's very noticeable it's really really great and um a lot of xbox games you know third party games as well they do support it yeah I and mean, if, if you force hd hdr on the entire time it works pretty much every every game and it's always every time i've played a game it always looks way better with the turn on so mm. yeah well i bought two new tvs nice so um, one for the bedroom. Uh, so the one in the bedroom, like it, we had a, an LG before, mm. and it, it, I don't know. I've, I've had it for a long time now. I've had it for like five or six years, and it got sort of like started getting a blue tint on it. Mm. So I was like, okay, no, can't deal with this. That sucks. Um, so we just went over to Curry's and uh, just bought a a high sense TV. Oh yeah, so, and it had Dolby Vision on it, and you know some other stuff, just like a it was like 40, to 40 inches or something like that. And put it in the bedroom. They got an Xbox Series S up there, and I was like, "Whoa, this like this looks unbelievable." Nice. And then I was like, "Now I want the same TV but larger and downstairs." Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Kayla was like, "Okay." Sure. So she just let me go out and buy a sixty-five inch. Whoa. Um, sixty-five inch, same TV, Dolby Vision, the lot. Oh my god, it's so good! And it, it basically, when you're selecting the HDMI's, because obviously with some TVs you have to go in and sort of select a thing for HDR to even work. Yeah, yeah. But um, with the HD uh, HDMI settings on this, you just click Advanced Settings and it, and then select Dolby Vision on your Xbox. Because uh, you, you must have seen it like, in the Xbox settings, Dolby Vision for gaming is there. Yeah, it gives like a list of things with TV supports, and you can turn them yeah. on and off. Yeah, so I just turned Dolby Vision on, and it just lo- it looks phenomenal. Even like stuff like FIFA, you know, things like you take for granted that look great anyway. They just look even better now. And I've been playing Callisto Protocol. Actually, I know we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but mm. I've been playing Callisto Protocol. So I'm trying to get through it before Dead Space comes out. Smart. Um, I'm not far away. I'm I'm like two chapters off finishing it. Cool. Uh, and that, I mean, that's a beautiful looking game anyway. But that again looks even better. So yeah, I'm playing a lot of stuff on my Xbox at the minute, just because it looks better. I'm building my gamer score up again and Microsoft rewards and, and stuff like that. So excellent. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's awesome. So yeah, I've been playing Callisto protocol, really enjoying it, enjoying the story, enjoying the graphics, enjoying how linear it is. Mm-hmm. 
Um, because sometimes every, everything's just open world at the minute. Yeah, I know what you mean. It does get old. So to have something where it's just basically enclosed walls is great. Yeah, go in the straight line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go this way and no other way. Yeah. Ever. That's all you need so, sometimes. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, so I've been playing that and I'm enjoying it still. Um, no, like I said, not far off finishing it. Uh, been playing some Forza as well because again, it's addictive to play when it looks so good and yeah. it plays so good. Yeah, definitely. And despite the ridiculous amount of hours I've already ploughed into it, there's just still more content, and it's like this game never ends. Yeah, it literally just play forever. Goes forever. Yeah, it's a great game. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's awesome. So yeah, so I've been playing High on Life, Retromania Wrestling, um Callista Protocol and a few other bits. Cool. Awesome. So yeah. Um yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just enjoying it and enjoying gaming, enjoying my Xbox. I will get back into PlayStation stuff at some point. I'm uh, I've just yeah. I've been so preoccupied doing xbox stuff that i've just not had a chance to to hop onto my playstation until about 15 minutes before this podcast because i wanted to have another look at uh the forspoken demo oh, yeah. after they they said they'd updated it and to be honest i'd just forgotten how to play it so i had to walk around for a couple of minutes thought yeah this still looks pretty but not as i expected it to look hmm. turned it off again yeah that's fair i can't see that game doing too well i don't need to fail no, I don't want it to fail anything like that, but the fact it's coming no, out no, no. the same week as Dead Space, I think, and it's not been positively received. It's like it's not been badly received, but it's also not been like a must-buy kind of game. So no, like, you're right. Yeah, it's a Square Enix again, though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing. No, I don't. I it's it's so weird because you got Forspoken, which has barely been spoken about. Well, you know, there was a when PS5 was first announced, if, if I remember rightly, there was some sort of tech demo that showed it off a little bit. Oh yeah, and it looked better then than it does now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But you, you know, that was a flop. The Avengers is still going, so it's obviously been successful in some way. Yeah. For now, Outriders that didn't really take off. Not at all. No, I think they've already said they're going to close the servers on that very soon. So. What was that other one that they brought out and that that got closed down so quickly? It was ridiculous. Um, I can't remember. You know which one I'm talking about, though. Is it? It was a oh, what, the, what the hell was it called? I can't remember. They brought a game out fairly recently, and it was uh, like an online type one. Yeah, and nobody played it. <laughs> Still find it. Babylon's Fall. Does that sound about right? That sounds very familiar. Yeah. Oh, let's have a look. Babylon. <clears> oh <throat> uh, yeah, because that was um, Platinum Games. They got Platinum Games to do the combat, but it just wasn't good. It didn't really work with in like an online setting. So yeah, and just, it, yeah. so they just got shut down. Yeah, and people didn't play it and it reviewed poorly. So yeah, it's just done. It'll be such a waste of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they've spent money making this game for nobody to play <laughs> and then just binning it off. It's like, oh. Welp. <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get what they're doing. Like, the only game... I mean, how many Square Enix games are, uh, are popular at the minute that aren't Final Fantasy? <laughs> Good question. Um, unless you can't think of anything. It's all Final Fantasy. Exactly. Yeah. So they're, trying yeah. To, they're trying to keep up with the popular trends, but they don't actually know how. <laughs> not actually making no. the right games to do it so yeah just take the fun yeah fancy. it's it's like they, they, they keep trying the online service thing don't they they wanted to you know they wanted to basically make the next destiny yeah pretty much now the avengers the the story stuff really good the other stuff is pretty boring and pointless yeah um you know outriders the story stuff's not even that interesting, and the graph graphically it's not great. Gameplay wise, it's fine, I suppose. But again, you know, you tr you're trying to make a Destiny clone when Destiny is still doing so well and is still so popular and still has, you know, years of content to come. Yeah, just let them do it. <laughs> Pretty much, you're not going to be able to compete with them. Look at um, 
Uh, what's the game called by Bioware? It's like Godfall? Death. No, it's like flying around. Anthem. That, oh, yeah. That died of death as soon as it came out, pretty much. Well, yeah, and again, a great idea. Yeah. Um, interesting sort of, um, you know, it's like, sort of like Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Man, but like Destiny, and it looked awesome, but then it came out and it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't awesome at yeah. all. Yeah. So oh, we boy. played a little bit together, didn't we? We yeah. were like, oh, okay, this is this is fun together. But then people didn't want to play it together. They just can't be asked. And it's like, it just wasn't enough content. It was just the same thing again and again. It just got old really fast. Yeah. It just yeah, wasn't worth playing. I think the only one that's even slightly succeeded at the Destiny style gameplay is the Division. Yeah, that's a good point. But that's at least quite different because it's more of a like realistic realisticish uh like war shooter so that's well yeah a bit different at least whereas anthem was still very space you know well destiny like um yeah yeah the only difference is you could fly like iron man <laughs> pretty much yeah but you know de- de- destiny's so good and yeah. i always look at it and i'm like oh, i really want to play this new stuff that you you're putting out but at the same time I don't want to go down that black hole of just playing Destiny because that's all I'll play. Yep, damn to me. <laughs> a few, well, like a, few, a couple of years ago, I was like, I'll just, I'll just see if I can get any more. I've been shot to trophies to make it to platinum. I've spent bloody another hundred hours on it almost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> insane. But it, it it's still so good. Yeah, it's amazing. I, it's, you know. Keeps improving and it just looks phenomenal as well. Yeah, incredible. So look, everyone. Especially Square Enix, leave them Destiny games to the people who make Destiny and exclusively to Destiny Two. <laughs> yeah, let, let Bungie do it. They know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Just, I just, but I don't know what Square Enix is doing anyway. Going back to Forspoken, and we we said it last week on the podcast that we thought it was going to flop, and I, I stand by it, and I think it will be very cheap very quickly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not going to sell well. No, this is a PlayStation exclusive as well, right? I think so. I think so. I'm yeah, gonna, I, I think now. it is. Yeah, uh, maybe PC as well. Perhaps I'm not sure. I think it it might be a PlayStation console exclusive. I think it might be right. It certainly isn't coming to Xbox. Oh uh, yeah, PS5 console exclusive timed. Timed. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> until January twenty third, twenty twenty five. So you've got a bit of a wait until this. Yeah. And who's going to give two shits about Forspoken then? Yeah, exactly. Do they do they think that it's going to like the hype is going to last until then? No, I doubt it would be the hype will last a couple of months. We can't buy yeah, the, the, a couple of months <laughs> is generous. I think you're looking at a week following it, and then Maybe. no one will be speaking about it. Yeah, no one will be speaking about it when it comes out. Like ne- I don't, I don't think you'll see much of anything about it next week when it comes out. I doubt it. It will be dead space, won't it? It will be, yeah. I would have thought so. Yeah, even the, even if Dead Space will make it bad, they'll still be talking about that more than Forspoken. Yeah, Forspoken because Forspoken is going to be Forspoken. Although, again, won't be bad. Probably. I mean, It'll based be... on what I've played so far, it's not great. Yeah, just average. Which is yeah, yeah. No one's going to talk about it. Basically, no, not in this day and age when there is so many good games out there. Yeah. No one's going to talk about a bang average. You know single player open world game that has never really been talked about all that much yeah one in another big list of open world single player games exactly yeah lost in the uh <coughs> lost in the you know just sheer amount of open world games that are about yeah that's again the square Enix trying to trying to get in <clears throat> with the cool kids cool crowd saying oh look we've got an open world single player game too which isn't this yeah. cool see we can do it too yeah. It's like, no, Square, to stop. Yeah. Read the room, Square. Yeah, stick to what you're good at. Stick to what you're good at. Just make Final Fantasy and... Yeah, just make Final Fantasy. And I guess... Because uh, <laughs> everyone's so hyped for Final Fantasy 16. Oh, yes. And, you know, everyone was so hyped for Final Fantasy 7 Remake. And those games are really good and do exactly what they should do. Mm-hmm. And everything else that they're trying to do is like... Pff, <laughs> yeah, it's just not working. Let's make these other games around 
us making Final Fantasy and just see what happens. Yeah. People like Destiny, they'll like this bullshit. Yeah. What do you mean we're closing the service down after a week? <laughs> uh, I'd say make Final Fantasy but Destiny, but you just... No, no <laughs> don't <laughs> fuck about with it like that. No, you'd ruin it. <laughs> also, don't give them that idea. They'll be like, oh, that's what the people want. <laughs> they, they already did that. God damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That wasn't even that wasn't even our Discord, it was something else. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> Somebody else's podcast popped us. Yeah. And it's not our lot. Gah, you bastards. I said muted the whole thing, didn't I? Oh yeah, well. Oh well. It's all good. <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna say now. Kind of important. Uh yeah, po- podcast pop has uh, has done us there, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Um but yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy. Oh yeah, so they made that Final Fantasy Seven Battle Royale for mobile in Japan, <laughs> which is already again the servers are shutting down fairly soon <laughs> if they've not already shut down. So yeah, like just stop throwing shit at the wall and hoping <laughs> it sticks. Yeah, it's it just isn't fucking working. <laughs> it's so dumb. Oh, square. What yeah. are you doing? Oh, I mean, I bought Ghost Simulator Three. Oh yeah. How's it? Yeah, I, it's <laughs> so good. It's so good. How awesome. I like um, the first one a lot. It's a lot. Um, there's a lot more to it than Goat Simulator 2. There's like oh, the missions and stuff and the way that the game works is, um, yeah, it's a lot more in depth, but it's still really stupid. And that's <laughs> all it needs to be, really stupid. Yeah, exactly. That's all we need. That's all we need. And I played the first one when yeah. it came out on PlayStation Plus. Ended up having a really good time with it, so... Yeah. yeah, the new one is really good. My, I was at my brother-in-law's uh, last week, and he was like, "Oh, we've been, me and the kids have been playing Goat Simulator." And I was like, "Oh, funny, you should mention Goat Simulator because this is the stupid thing that we did last week." <laughs> yeah. So I showed him, and he's like, "Oh, that's amazing." He's like, "Look, you should see Goat Simulator 3. So he put it on, and I was like, "Dude, this is so good! <laughs> like, this like, it's so fun and so stupid. Why have I got an old lady riding on my goat's back shooting a bazooka? Why?" <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, it's so stupid. It's literally an old woman robot sat on your goat's back with a bazooka. So it's perfect. Game of the year. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. Go to the year. Go to the year, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Billy, for that recommendation last week. It's uh, much appreciated. Yeah, shout out, Billy. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, is there any, have we got any gaming news to uh, to speak of this week? Uh, yeah, speaking of Final Fantasy, segue. Um, there's a rumor. Square Enix are making a, a Final Fantasy Battle Royale Fortnite clone. <laughs> yeah. For consoles, everyone. Coming out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> there's a rumor going around on War Places, I think it's 4chan or something. So you know it's going to be true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about a rumored uh, Final Fantasy presentation coming out on February 7th, about the 30th, 35th anniversary. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to get announced, apparently, definitely, 100% certain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they've got, got the whole list of things that their presentation is going to you know, involve. Definitely include. Yeah. yeah. And you've got the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster promotional video, makes sense. The Theatre Rhythm uh, game promotional video, makes sense, it's coming out this year. Uh, Final Fantasy IX remake, which has been rumoured for a long time now, coming out this fall. Hmm. The same year as Final Fantasy 16 remake and 7 Rebirth. Okay, sure. So <laughs> many re's. Yeah, <laughs> Rebirth remake. But so yeah. how much of a remake is... When you say remake, mm-hmm. it's not a remake in as in Final Fantasy 7 type remake, surely. Damn. Because there's no fucking way that <laughs> that would come out this year. Exactly, yeah. It just says remake. Um, I, assume, I, I would just imagine it's supposed to be like a remaster. But then it's already a remaster on PS4. Already exists. Mm. So I don't know what this would be. Did, did they do? Did they do eight and nine? Uh, yeah. So did eight? Like yeah. Basically, eight is more of a remaster because they basically redid all the character models. But nine okay. is sort of like upres. I think it's a mobile version, which they upres make work on consoles. But I don't know what, I don't know what else they do. It's weird. Um, well, considering how long it took them to make Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, fall 2036 probably seems a bit more realistic for any sort of Final Fantasy IX remake. Yeah, the only way this can be real if it's a very like basic remaster of some kind. Um, but I doubt it. <clears throat> it has, it's something that's been rumoured for a while, so I wouldn't be surprised if something Final Fantasy IX 
comes out at some point soon. So, I don't know. That's at least somewhat plausible, I guess. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so non-committal to it as well. So yeah. Maybe, I don't know, yeah. I guess. Mm. Uh, it's definitely lies, but we'll see. Yeah. And then we've got uh, World of Final Fantasy 2, A Mog of Light. Terrible subtitle. Uh, yeah. World of Final Fantasy was a spin-off uh, game, a bit like Pokemon, with Final Fantasy characters. Um, I have a little, a few couple of models here from the game. Very cute. Oh, wait, I remember um, this game. Yeah, it's pretty cute. Um, it, I think it sold all that well, so I'd be surprised if it gets a sequel. Maybe I think I played a demo. Maybe, yeah. I think it sold better in Japan, so again, maybe? But again, that's coming out in May this year. That's another game, along with Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 9 Remake, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, and everything else. Pixel Remaster, three is it with them. What's Final <laughs> Fantasy 7 Rebirth? Is that Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2? Yeah, pretty much. And that's supposed to be coming out this year? Uh, well, winter, so it could be end of this year, start of next year, sort of thing. Right, so winter 2028, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then another new game coming out in summer, <laughs> Stories from Ivelisse, it's like Final Fantasy Tactics, basically. Okay. Um, that's coming out in summer, another game, added to the list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we've got an announcement, uh, Final Fantasy Ten Three. Okay. What? Yeah, so there's the 10-2, which came out a long time ago on PS2. Um, it's kind of finished up the story of, like, 10. Um, but I don't know where they would go from there, because it, like, it all comes together and ends. So, like, I don't know what this would be. Also, why now? Also, why now <laughs> when you've got 20 other Final Fantasy games in development? Because Square Enix are throwing shit at the wall, hoping <laughs> it sticks. Yeah, it'll be an online service game. Like Destiny. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy Ten Three, but actually it's Destiny. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and then there's just, like more stuff has always been announced. Also, a Final Fantasy Eleven rework project coming out this fall. Um, yeah, okay. I love Final Fantasy Eleven. It's a big part of my uh, late teenage, early 20s uh, life. Uh, long time ago now. Long time ago. Many, many <laughs> moons ago. Um, but again, close to, close to my heart. But I'd be very surprised if it's getting any sort of remote rework anytime soon or ever, because uh, it's very old now. Um, so not... when's this supposed to happen? Uh, fall. No, no. When's this fall Square fall. Enix event thing? Oh, uh, February seventh. So like a couple of weeks. Okay, a couple of weeks. Oh. I can't wait for this not to happen and for us to not talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put a tw- uh, tweet out saying, "If this is true, I will choke slam myself and film it." So yeah. That'd be awesome. It would be awesome. I'll be, I'll be fully, I'll be happy to do that. I'll be happy to apply it as well. But it won't happen. Yeah. I mean, I'd love it if it happened, but it won't happen. But the thing is, now you'll have to choke slam yourself because you put it out in the wild. I will. I will, I will happily choke slam myself if this is real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's all. That, that's all that stuff. But it's definitely going to happen. Thanks for one hundred percent going to happen. Confirmed. Yep. Um, fact. Nothing ever. You know, to really bring it into question. Yes. Thank you, Four Chan. For that definitely meal spoiler that's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's that <laughs> um cool what else we got um i spoke about glisto protocol earlier um unfortunately the sales have been a less much less than they had hoped uh in fact it got outsold by a 12 year old game uh specifically it got outsold by the never ending never dying mario kart 8 deluxe <laughs> It's, it's never going away it, Mario Kart 8 it's, yeah. it's in the same it's in the same sort of thing as Grand Theft Auto 5 <laughs> pretty much yeah so that's still going Smash Bros Ultimate as, as well also outsold it um, wow so yeah not doing super great I think the reviews didn't help um, no it, it was very mixed I mean I, yeah. I like it personally but I'm sort of playing it playing it for what it is which mm. is a very linear space basically Dead Space ripoff but <laughs> basically um it's you can tell it's big budget because of the actors that they've got in it and the the graphics are very high end. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I guess for some reason people didn't love it. Yeah, I don't love it. Don't get me wrong. I think Dead Space remake will be better. Um, but yeah, I, I it's a shame that it hasn't done well. It means obviously we're we're probably not going to get a sequel now. Yeah, unlikely. Um. But hey, look, it is what it is. This is, you know, 
games in this day and age are a huge gamble, especially when you hype them up so much. I mean, and they did. They 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 hyped that game up so much, and I think the internet hyped that game up a lot as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, the really good trailer, like um, announcement trailer. It's got people hyped. Yeah. So I think everybody had like really high expectations, and uh, yeah, it couldn't reach those high peaks, unfortunately. I think what possibly didn't help is the fact that the Dead Space remake is very close because, true, you know, everyone's like, oh, this is like Dead Space, and you know, the trailer's really giving me Dead Space vibes. And then it's like, oh, uh, Dead Space remake uh, from the ground up is uh, it's coming in January. They're like, oh, that's not far away. Let's wait for that instead. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's way. And that, I think that's probably what that is quite possibly what people are doing, but. Um, it's a shame because it is a good game and it is worth playing. Um, perhaps just not a, a full price. Yeah, pretty much. Because it's, it's only it's only like a 12, 14 hour game. Yeah, it's on my wish list for, waiting for it to come down in price. Yeah, and it will. It will. Like Forspoken will. Yeah, I think it's already on sale now, like 20% off. Yeah, I think it is actually, yeah. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, the other thing I've got in here is uh, Sony have put out like the launch window uh, PlayStation VR 2 games. Your little list mm, here. Okay. I might go through that quickly. Have you pre-ordered it again? Sorry, I forgot. I, yes. I forgot if you did. You did, yeah. pre okay. the Horizon uh, bundle edition. Nice. It's okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I love, very hyped. I love VR. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to put my uh, VR 1 on eBay to get rid of it because there's no point in having both. Um, well, no, probably not. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, no, love VR, can't wait for this. Um, mm. List here, we've got <clears throat> we've got After the Fall. Uh, oh, good game. That's a really good game. I've got that on Quest. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, Altair Airbreaker. Not sure what that is. Uh, nope. Before Your Eyes. Uh, Cities okay. VR, which sounds pretty really cool, because it's like a city building thing in VR. Oh, yeah, I've got, I've got Little Cities, which is like a, um, a simpler version of it. Oh, cool. So ci cities, you know, city skylines. Yeah, yeah. It's that. Very cool. But in VR. So it's Cities VR, basically. But yeah, I've got a game called Little Cities, and it's, it's really, really good. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, Cosmonious High. That's my phone going off. Um, Creed Rise to Glory Championship Edition. I think this is on the original uh, VR. PSVR. It is. That's a boxing game. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, the Dark Pictures Switchback, which is like the, um, the movie-style uh, games, choose your adventure kind of games. Yeah, so are they doing it the same way? Because obviously um, they did until until dawn, uh, like a roller coaster type game, didn't they? Is it oh, some, something similar to that? Yeah, possibly. Let's have a look. Um, oh yeah, rail I'm shooter. I'm sure. Yeah, rail it shooter, is a rail yeah. shooter. Yeah, oh, okay. okay, that makes sense. That's cool. That's cool that they're doing that. Yeah, I'll be down for that. Like that was good me. as well, actually. What the hell is it called? Until dawn. Um, Rise of Blood, something like that. It is something like that, isn't it? Yeah, I'll have a look. Until I remember it being good. Rush of Blood, that's it. Rush of Blood, yeah. yeah. That was, I, it was good. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Shooting things was not to love. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, a game called Damio. Yep, that's like a... Um, so it's basically like a, um, a board game. You know like these board games that nerds play? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, sorry, nerds. <laughs> um, but it's like that, but in VR. Oh, that sounds cool. Like it's supposed to be very good, but I've not played it. Oh, like a card, card based game. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Discronia Kronos Alternate. Bad name. Terrible name. <laughs> Discronia. Uh, let's have a look. A visual novel developed and, and published by Izanagi Games. Cool. So it's VR, visual novel. Sure. Explains it all why it's got such a bad name. That yeah. It's a visual novel. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Fan Fantavision 2020X, the best year. Fantavision was that like a light, like a firework type game or something like that? Um, I recognise the name. Uh, pyrotechnic puzzles, rhythm-based performances, multiplayer, sword fighting, and more. And immersive experiences await. Okay. Sounds vision. Sound sounds vision. Sounds sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> sounds vision. <laughs> Listen with that in mind. Most um, contradictory thing ever as well. <laughs> sounds sounds vision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing it. it. Looks really fun. I think Fan um, Fantavision is a game from like it's like a PS2 era game, I think. Yeah, I think it's a PS2 game. Yeah. Yeah, looks cool. Good stuff. Uh, Gran Turismo Seven is getting a free update for VR. Yeah, because um, awesome. Gran Turismo Sport did, I believe, for um, the 
previous PSVR. Yeah, I think this is a more you can be do pretty much everything in this game in VR. Whereas I think sport you can only have mm. access to one mode, whereas this is okay. But in VR, which is cool. That's cool. Vomit inducing. Good. Yep. Can't wait for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain is probably the biggest release coming day one. That's 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 the big hitter, isn't it? I mean, that's that's oh, yeah. the. The selling piece for PlayStation VR two, yeah, it's like the poster child, basically, for sure. And it will be will be great. It looks phenomenal. Oh yeah, um, it will be very very good. Absolutely. Uh, we've got Job Simulator, which is excellent. Played that on the original oh. VR. Absolutely, what a game! Very fun. Uh, got Jurassic uh, Jurassic World Aftermath. Yep. Okay, that's uh, that is on Quest as well. So that's it's, you can get that on Switch now as well. But. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's awesome in VR. It's basically um, the aftermath of what happens at Jurassic World, basically. Yeah, um, yeah it's good. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, Kayak VR Mirage, bracket, better, yep. better than life. <laughs> Not a good name. Terrible name. Why, bro, why put Kayak VR? Sells it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, surely. Um, uh, in brackets, better than life. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it looks like, it just looks like a, a kayak game, basically. Yep, so Kayak VR basically hits the nail on the head, right? Pretty much. Looks pretty. Oh, Kayak VR, I'm not really sure about that. Oh, it's the, it says in brackets, better than life. Oh, oh well, you know, if it's better than life, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Why go actual kayaking when you can do this? Yeah, because yeah, it's better than life. Exactly. So, better than life, that's so bad. That's so dumb. Sam's uh, vision. <laughs> so, so <vicious. laughs> we've got a podcast title for this week that's good yeah <laughs> uh, a game called uh, Kazuna AI Touch the Beat which is a very Japanese looking uh, via, um, rhythm game and would also explain the terrible name and yeah the terrible name I like rhythm games so yeah I'm down for that uh, what else have we got The Last Clockwinder which is also a game that exists um, yeah a, about winding clocks. Yeah. Unique mix of automation and puzzle gameplay. It's got highly received on Oculus Quest, apparently. So that's good. A high reviews. Cool. Okay. Never heard of it, but that's fine. Yeah. Not that I'm, you know, not that I've played every single game on Oculus, but <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of it. Uh, we've got, uh, let's have a look. The Light Brigade, which is... Uh, Light Brigade. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. I just Googled it. It was coming up with something completely different. Oh, no. <laughs> game. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, is it, oh, it's a roguelike VR shooter. I like roguelikes. I like shooting things in VR. So, sound good to me. There we go. Good. Awesome. Uh, Moss 1 and 2 remaster. Excellent. Moss is excellent. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, NFL Pro Pro Era. For... Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's on Quest as well. It looks very, very good. Um, cool. And it is supposed to be very, very good, actually. Awesome. Authentic. Excellent. For, for all you uh, hand egg lovers. Yep. Uh, no Man's Sky VR, good stuff, great game. Cool, yeah. Uh, That's on everything now. Oh uh, yeah, pretty much. God, uh, I remember when that came out? Jesus Christ, uh, everyone hated it, universally hated it. They got death threats and all sorts of shit, didn't they? Remember God. that? Yeah, I, I yeah, banned it for some reason. Um, it's not. It, I, I've played it since, and it's really good. Yeah, they've added so much to it now. It's a completely different game. Very cool. Totally different game. Very cool. Um, we've got Pavlov VR. Yeah, that's is, pa- uh, Pavlov. Is it Pavlov Shack? Um, he's just called Pavlov. Pavlov in here. It's a, okay. It's multiplayer it's shooter. A shooter. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> very popular. Cool. Yeah, it's very high reviews on Steam. So that's good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Pistol Whip, which I believe was on uh, the original VR as well. Yep. Cool. Uh, Puzzling Blazes, which is okay. the, also a game that exists. Mm. High, high reviews. Um, let's have a look. Hyper realistic miniatures. You put together hyper realistic miniatures of beautiful places from around the globe. Sounds interesting. Sounds, sounds riveting. Sounds very unique, if nothing else. Yep. <laughs> um, we've got <laughs> one of the ones I'm most looking forward to uh, the Resident Evil Village uh, VR update. Which, of uh, course, yep. I still haven't played that game yet, so I look forward to playing through that in VR. Oh, you've not played it at all? No, not yet. It's on my shelf. My infinite shelf of backlogs. Um, so yeah, look oh, you'll love it. it. You will absolutely love it. I've been playing yeah. it in third person on Xbox. Nice. Uh, yeah, I love I love um, seven. So no doubt I love this. Um, yeah, seven is so good. Yeah, so so good. 
Uh, we've got Res Infinite. Uh, another port. Cool. Yep. Res Infinite. Very cool. Uh, Song in the Smoke. Uh, let's have a look. Song in the Smoke. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it is a game that is on VR. Here we go. <laughs> Battle strange beasts and brave the elements to stay alive in Song of the Smoke. An expansive and mysterious VR survival game sent the world outside of time. How mysterious. Mm. Sounds cool. <laughs> Sounds vision. Sounds very vision. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a snort. <laughs> a snort as well. That's... I wear a snort for me. Uh, got st- God damn it. <laughs> uh, it took me more than a good thing. Right. <clears throat> got Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. Yep. The Star that's, Wars. Uh, that's very popular on Quest and looks really good. I've not actually played it myself, but it looks really good. <laughs> 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 It's really done you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we had goat noises last week, and sounds vision is what does you. Oh, I think I'm broken. This podcast has broken me, finally. It's taken 167 <laughs> years. <laughs> finally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Oh, I think so. Yeah. I'm <laughs> 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 I'm very vision right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, know what's Dude, I can see the tears in your eyes uh, <laughs> from laughing. It's not that funny, Finn. Shut up. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, very vision. Right. I'm going to cut some of that out. Right. <laughs> Synth Riders. Cut none of that out. It's the best. <laughs> oh my god. What's wrong with me? I think I'm broken. Right. Synth Riders. It's another game. That's coming out. Oh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> super popular as well. Cool. Uh, the t- Tale of <laughs> Onogoro for VR. Uh, Tale of what? Ono- Onogoro. Definitely uh, Japanese. Definitely not about the Mortal Kombat baddie. <laughs> probably. Combines traditional Japanese culture and steampunk elements to create yeah. its unique world. Um, <laughs> yes. Cool. So Japanese as well. Very. <laughs> uh, we've got Tentacular. Uh, virtual reality game developed by some company. Um, <laughs> I still can't pronounce. Good. The game was released. Blah blah blah. blah. Nobody cares. Um, what's the game about? Uh, just, tentacles, I guess. Yeah, VR game about a gigantic but good-hearted tentacled beast trying to figure out its place in the world. Sure. Oh, <laughs> sounds lovely. Sounds lovely. Uh, we've got uh, Tetris, Tetris effects connected. Another port. Good. Tetris effects. Cool. Uh, Thumper. Just another game that's been around for a while. Rhythm game, yeah, that's a good game as well. Very good. Um, we've got The Walking Dead. <laughs> Shut up. <We've> got the... <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> it keeps going back to my head. Um, <laughs> the walk- <laughs> <laughs> Mid-sentence as well. <laughs> I keep thinking Finn, you're usually the composed one out of the two of us. Oh, I don't know. And you've, you, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking don't think about it and that makes me think about it uh, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 very good sequel yeah. to the first game apparently the first game is coming out with it as well which is cool oh good that's good oh cool uh, Vacation Simulator another great game <laughs> played on the first game played on the first uh, BR I'm just I'm, I'm looking at you trying to hold it together <laughs> I'm good, I'm good now. It's all, it's all out of my system. Uh. <laughs> uh, I've got a game called What the Bat. It's a game made by the same guys who made What the Golf. Which is a... Uh, you have bats for hands. <laughs> I was like, uh, quicker bats, not the animal bats. Like I was thinking. What, uh, what bat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, And the last game on the list, finally, is Zenith, The Last City. Oh, that's uh, like a big, um, that's super popular and very ambitious for a VR game. So it's like an MMO. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, big yeah. open world. Especially really, actually. Cool. Awesome. Very cool. So yeah, lots of good stuff coming with VR. Very excited for that. Very vision. <laughs> 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 Ooh, okay, that really broke me. I don't know why. That's never happened to me before. Well, it has. It's not very, very long time. 
Ugh. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> Are you good? I'm good. Wrestling. Okay. Wrestling. Uh, Vince McMahon settled a, uh, a lawsuit. Did you see this? I did. He paid someone a lot of money uh, to prove his innocence. Um, <laughs> he put, paid it, so they settled it out of court. Vince paid him a lot of yeah. money because he didn't want to deal with it. He didn't want to go through the whole process because that yeah. makes you look super innocent. Yeah. <laughs> I could go to court and win because I'm, I'm definitely not guilty, but I'm going to pay you the money anyway just to... You know, just to make it go away. Here's eleven million dollars. Yeah, I'm still innocent. I'm still very innocent. Have, I have some money yep. anyway. One hundred percent innocent. innocent. Uh, yep. I found this eleven million down the back of my sofa. <laughs> yeah, he, he, you're gonna have this. There we go. Let's never talk about it again. Why it's in we... one piece, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been saving it for a long time in this really tall novelty whiskey bottle that I've got. <laughs> yeah, but you can you can just have it. There's like eleven million dollars in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Very... <laughs> so Vince is basically he's definitely he's still laughing about it he keeps coming back to my head I don't know why uh... <laughs> 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 uh... yes Mitchell Brown very innocent very very innocent 100% innocent yes. never done anything wrong no, no but definitely, definitely not a rapist or anything de like de that. <laughs> definitely not a sex offender yeah um, in any sort of way yeah did you hear that snippet of Nick Khan on um, a podcast that he did? Um, I haven't. I don't know if you've seen anything about it or not. Basically, he's sort of talking about uh, the, the sale of WWE and, and stuff like this. And that's why Vince has come back. And he always <laughs> expected Vince to come back <laughs> and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost Finn on this episode of the podcast. I feel like um, Jay Uso when Sammy said, very Usi. He's trying to do yeah. his best to hold it in, he just couldn't. <clears throat> <sighs> I've never seen you react on the podcast like this throughout the entire years that we've been doing it. <laughs> Me neither. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> of all the stupid shit that we've done over the years, it is that that has broken you as well. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> now you're making me laugh. <laughs> oh, let's get this quickly so I can. Just, uh... All right, yes, Nick Khan talking about the other Khan. <clears throat> Yeah, so <laughs> the other Khan. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically Nick Khan was on this podcast and uh, he was like they were talking about AEW being a threat to WWE and stuff like this. And Nick Khan was like, well, how are they doing right now? And I can't remember, it was Bill Russell, I think it was the podcast. Um, and they were, he was like, well, not great. And he went, well, there you go. They're not yeah. a threat. Well, and he kept referring to Tony Khan as the kid. I've never <laughs> right, met okay. the kid but I'm sure he's a nice kid. And he said, I've met the dad and the dad's very impressive. And he, he made, he said something that I thought was quite interesting and also very much a dig. Um, it was something like, uh, anybody can run a business at a loss. Mm. That's easy. Interesting. As long as you've still got somebody there who can bankroll the company. Yeah. It's implying that they're, which of course is what his dad's doing. Yeah. Essentially they're saying is. Uh, winning AEW at a loss for now. So. Basically. I mean, and, yeah. and they have to be as well, I think, at this point, because, I mean, we've seen the, the, see, the screens from sort of this week's Dynamite. I've watched Dynamite. I know you haven't yet, but, um, you know, I retweeted something and, you know, basically showed the whole sort of hard cam section uh, empty. So yeah, the, the where the hard cam would sit, not where the hard cam would face. Where the hard cam would sit, that entire section was empty. Now, I had a couple of people come back to me and be like, oh, that section was never on sale. But the question is, why? Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. I know we've had WWE events that have been similar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dark times. <laughs> I'm sure it still happens now. But uh, yeah, it's not a good look. It isn't. And it's a shame because, again, you know, there's been some really great wrestling on AEW recently. Mm. Like, really great wrestling. And. I don't see how it can be sustainable for them to keep running at a loss. I mean, how, how long can they realistically do that for? 
Yeah. Like I said, the matches have been excellent. Like pay per view level shows almost every yeah. week. Um, it's crazy. But yeah, you see, like the ratings for Rampage are always really low. The attendance seems to be down a lot. So it's like, I don't know, it's still needs to do something. Um, yeah. R- run smaller venues. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if that it gives off a bad look, yeah. but surely you'd rather have pictures of full venues, even if they're smaller, than running bigger venues and not being able to fill them at all. Yeah, exactly. Now, I, f- I feel like we're shooting on AEW every week when yeah. we come on here, but we're, we're really not. But it's, you know, we're trying to sort of think of ways, you know, or, you know, question the way that they're doing things at the minute. And running the company at a loss is definitely, you know, not, uh, you know, it's just not sustainable. It can't be, not for a, a long period of time. I know the Khans have got a, a whole ton of money, and, you know, I saw something this week on the internet saying that they would be potentially interested in the purchase of WWE and then merging. Hmm. <clears throat> That'd be very interesting. But the way um, Nick Khan was uh, downplaying it makes you think it's almost definitely not going to happen. I mean, it wasn't going to happen anyway, but uh, it seems even less likely now that that's going to happen. It'd be cool, it'd be interesting, for sure. Um, yeah. But, yeah, nah. He's gonna no, be, he's gonna I, I, pl- I don't think Vincent let it happen. No, I don't think so. He's too stubborn. For sure. Yeah. He can do it. No one else can. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But it'll, it'll yeah. be one of the big companies. Like, I, I, people are saying he's going to be Saudi. I, I think even even for Vince, that's too much of a bad publicity thing. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. The Saudis are trying to do a lot of stuff in sports at the minute. And again, I know this is something that we spoke about last week, but... I don't, th- I mean, and them rumors were very much sort of played down from those within WWE. Yeah. I don't think it'll be sold to the Saudis. I think it'll be Disney, ESPN, someone like that. Yeah, Comcast. I think Com- isn't Comcast, don't they own um, Peacock? Uh, yeah, they're like a big cable company in a, in uh, the States. Yeah. I think, it was in that they I all- think Shane McMahon had something to do with them at one point. Uh, yeah. Because like, Comcast already paying WWE a bunch of money um. to get them on Peacock. So if they buy the company outright, then it might even work out cheaper for them. Um, yeah. So that makes sense. But, yeah, but again, you know, it's all very much guesswork on the, on the internet, as it always is. Yeah. Um, but who knows? I mean, it's it's been, a, it's, it's been pretty quiet this last few days in regards to WWE stuff like or news in general. Obviously, they're just very much building towards the Royal Rumble now. Mm. Apparently Vince is back in his office and has been suggesting stuff. But again, you know, there's not really been any elaboration on that. But Triple H apparently had a talent meeting before Raw this week and said that, um, you know, reassured the roster that he was still very much the head of, you know, in charge of creative and nothing has changed there and that Vince is still very much there just to facilitate the sale of the company. Yeah. I think he said, done like Vince can make suggestions, but I'm still the one, you know, having the final say in what goes on. Uh, in yeah. Creative, so that's fine. If that's true, then that's, that's fine. You know, like SmackDown and War have still been good this past this past week. And yeah, nothing's really changed in that in that you know in that sense. Yeah, and you know the upcoming events look like they're going to be good. War Thirties next week. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, the Raw Rumbles next weekend. Yeah, got over that. So. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Speaking of the Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. the pre-show before the pre-show is making its big return Woo. for the Royal Rumble. It's back, baby. Yeah, we're, we're, we're bringing it all back. Yeah, round of applause. So the pre-show before the pre-show. Yes. My five. High five. Woo. So yeah, the <laughs> pre-show before the pre-show will be back probably around nine, half nine at a guess yeah. next Saturday evening, which is the 28th of January. Yeah, cool. I can't wait for the Bumble. Exciting always, times. Yeah, it's always my favourite uh, event of the year. Yeah, I always love the Raw Rumble. I'm excited to watch it with you guys. It's going to be it's gonna be good. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So um, going back to, you know, AEW, Dynamite was good this week again. I know you've not seen it yet, uh, so I won't spoil stuff, but... <laughs> Uh, Brian Danielson versus Bandido was really good, uh, as awesome. was Darby Allen versus Kushida. Excellent. Great to see Kushida on that stage, by the way, on uh, the main event of a big weekly wrestling show. Yeah, that's awesome. Big Love fan Kushida. of Kushida. Yeah, me too. 
It's a shame he never really got the chance in WWE, but it doesn't, in my opinion, really fit the WWE bill. I don't know why. And I never really thought that, even when he was in NXT. And even though I'm a big fan of him, I still never really felt that he would have a long lasting run in WWE. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, I know what you mean. Never really felt. I don't know, WWE-ish, <laughs> if that makes any sense. No, it just made perfect sense. Yeah, it's not like Nakamura, where Nakamura does feel WWE-ish. Yeah, he's got that like very theatrical entrance and just personality. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Kushida, a, a phenomenal wrestler, just uh, so good in ring. Yeah. Cool. But the gimmick falls a little bit flat for me. The the uh, the sort of Marty McFly Back to the Future type gimmick that he runs with. Yeah. It's not terrible by any stretch. I just didn't think he would have a you know longevity in WWE. Yeah, agreed. And perhaps he saw that as well, and that's why you know he decided to head back to New Japan. And obviously, he's been making appearances in AEW and Impact as well. So, look, more power to him. Yeah. I, and I really do like him. It's just some people aren't fit for WWE and he was one of those guys yeah but no it's yeah, as you say, it's a phenomenal wrestler I'm glad he's uh, made his way into AEW now look forward to watching that uh, later tonight probably yeah uh, top flight versus the Young Bucks was re- to be fair top to bottom the matches were really good awesome the only thing that f- fell a little bit flat was the uh, the women's match Tony Storm versus Willow Nightingale which is really sh- which it really is a shame because I like both yeah oh. um, but it fell flat and they um, yeah, I, I, the Soraya stuff, uh, I think it's died on its ass already. Yeah, it's weird that. <laughs> well, it seemed to happen, like, even, like, not as much as this, but even, like, when CM Punk came back, it was huge for a few weeks, and then he's kind of felt like another wrestler, you know what I mean? And then, yeah. and then the whole thing happened, and then it's all gone haywire. Um, yeah, but Soraya's just sort of there now. Yeah, strange. <clears throat> Yeah, it's just, and it's a real shame. I hope they do something positive with her because obviously she does have a lot to offer. But uh, at the minute, she's seemingly going the way of any other former WWE signing when they go to AEW, which is um, <clears throat> sort of dropping off the radar a little bit. Yeah, just a shame. I do think she'll be back in WWE eventually, hopefully wrestling. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's weird that, how they do things. Like, everyone comes in with this huge hype. Look at Keith Lee. Came in all the type. People were like, yeah, oh, he's going to get all these championship opportunities. He's going to be like Big Q's name. And now he's in he's in the tag team division. Then this week was he even on the show this week. No, he's not even in the tag team division anymore because him yeah. and Swerve aren't even a team now. Yeah, strange. Very strange. But I always felt that Paige had a had an actual presence when she was uh, on WWE TV. I just feel like she falls into the background a little bit. Crowd weren't into it at all. Mm. Um, and it, you'll see what I mean when you watch it, but overall the show was really really good so and that's the one thing i keep going back to it aw is super consistent at the minute in terms of actual wrestling product there just, just seems to be something off about it and i can't quite put my finger on it yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean it's, it's missing it's missing <clears throat> that spark and he's i think once it finds yeah. that little thing it's missing it'll be huge it'll be top level um it'll reach the it'll reach the high heights but right now, yeah, it's there, like... but there's got to be a reason why it's not attracting more of a fan base. Because obviously, you look at the fans that go to AEW shows, and it's the same kind of people every single week. It's, you know, it's um, it's mainly men mm-hmm. of a certain, of a you know, late twenties, early thirties, sort of age. The the marks basically. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's very difficult to put it in any other term than it, it's very marky. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm not sure if that's if that's the demographic that they're going to aim for. Then they're always going to be very much. It, what it is is people sort of maybe clamoring for that attitude era style attitude and you know swearing and blood and whatever. Um, yeah. um, thing with WWE is they. As well as marks, they ought to get like the younger fans and the older fans been watching it forever. Because as you say, as much as you know, people um, talk about about PG era. It you know, if you get the kids in there, you get like younger viewers, and then you also get like our sort of age viewers, and it's to get a whole wide range of people watching. Um, Wrestling can and should be for everybody. Yeah, exactly. So it's far more far more um, eyes on WWE because of like the huge 
know, audience. But I think that maybe that's what, what AEW need to do. They need to sort of, <clears throat> you know, branch into, you know, making it so that it's not kid friendly. I don't, you know, I don't mean to say that, but, you know, so there's something for everybody there because at the minute it is very much directed at wrestling fans. Yeah. Very much there's so. no sort of wider audience reach there. Yeah. Like there's no, you know, there's, there's no Roman Reigns. You know what I mean by that? There's no John Cena. There's no Roman Reigns like, style figure in AEW to give it that worldwide appeal, that wider appeal to different ages, younger ages. Yeah, no, no superstar, you know, like actual superstar. Like you You're right. Ages. I mean, I think MJF is obviously phenomenal. Yeah. A great wrestler, a great character, and will be a great champion for the company, but he's not. He's he's not I'm trying to you know even Roman Reigns now is a heel, yeah, you know still more marketable than any wrestler on the face of planet Earth. Yeah, big time. Um, and you just feel that that's what AEW is lacking. It's lacking that sort of appeal to a wider audience. Yeah, I thought the only person that could be on that level is Brian. Well, yeah, yeah. Brian Danielson. Because he's yeah. already known, he's already a big star in WWE, and people love Brian Nelson, you know, young people, old people, everyone. Um, so if you give him the spotlight, that will hopefully get more eyes, and you can build, build, build like, like Snowball from there, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I think that, if it was me, Mr. Vin Khan, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd put the belt on uh, Brian and go from there, I think. But See, the thing is, I don't, I don't think they're going to take that belt off MJF for a long time now. Yeah, probably not. Because because MBF is hugely over with the marks, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I wouldn't be against them putting the championship on Daniel Bryan. I'm Brian Danielson. Sorry, Jr. Moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't mind that at all. No, that'd be awesome. But they, they need to find that big star. Because Mo- Mox most certainly isn't it. I and I rate John Moxley very highly. I do. He's great. But. He's he's just not that he's not that tier of megastar. You know they, they've got they've got great talent they've got great stars, but they've not got that megastar those you know super just super Superman looking guys. You know what I mean? Super that will stars. take you to you know WWE's always had them. Yeah, they know how to build star for sure. Just look at Cody right now. He's not even there. Well, exactly. <laughs> Never months, and he's still huge. Usually over, more so than he yeah. was in AEW. Yeah. So, you know, so th- I think that's what. So it's great booking, great wrestling matches, and they are great wrestling matches. There's no two ways about that. Never can't even question that. Oh yeah. But they need to look at building mega stars now. I feel like they've dropped the ball with Wardlow. I feel like he could have been up there. Agreed. Yeah, Wardlow was so huge when he beat MJF. And then yep. completely dropped the ball. It's like, where is, where is he? What's he been doing? Couldn't tell you. Yeah. <clears throat> Shame. Yeah, it's, 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 well, I think once they crack that and they start figuring out how to build stars, instead of sort of bringing people in to be a flash in the pan for a few weeks and then to have them vanish, recycle, do, do the same thing with somebody else, rinse, repeat, which is what they've been doing essentially for the last four years. Mm. They really need to, they need a focal point for the heavyweight championship, which for me should be Kenny Omega, should be Brian Danielson. Um, you know, it can be Mox. Yeah. Should have been Cody probably looking at looking back at it now. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um and, you, and then you do the same with the women's division. Britt Baker is your focal point or Jade Cargill. There's your face, you know, what can Britt Baker can be as super over as a face. Jay Cargill can always be hated as a heel. They are two they them two can be complete megastars. Yeah, absolutely. Jay Cargill as superstar written all over her. She's got the perfect look for oh. a wrestler. She's, she's, like, she's got megastar written all over her. Big time. Yeah. Um it's just about now finding being patient. Be patient and, and really build somebody. Yeah. Because who's your top face in that company at the minute? Uh, I guess Kenny Omega. 
I guess. <laughs> uh, or, yeah, or Brian Danielson. Or Brian Danielson, or Mox, or Adam Page, or... Yeah, because there's no, there's no like one guy who could be not the guy. It's all... Yeah. See, I don't think Adam Page is out. there. I don't think he's I don't think he's that level, and I don't think he ever will be. Yeah, maybe not. I think he's yes. mid-card. I think he's TNT Championship level at best. Maybe. I do like him a lot, but he doesn't have that edge that like a Moxley or Omega has. At least not yet. No. Maybe one day. No, I, and I think I think it was a case of too much too soon for uh, for Hangman Page. Yeah, you can probably right there. Yeah, for sure. I threw him in at the deep end. Yeah. Um, he. I don't think. I just don't think he's that. I don't think he's that guy. I. I don't see him at that level. Try as they might, I just don't see it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. But he is very good. I will say that. Oh, he, he's a great wrestler. You know that. Yeah, and again, you can't dispute that. I just don't think he's that world heavyweight champion. No. You know, CM Punk is a megastar. He's just. He's a big superstar. And he brings eyes to the product. Yeah. So if they're looking to bring CM Punk back at some point, which apparently isn't uh, out of the question at Maybe. this point now, um, then you, you have to build your, your heavyweight division around him. Yeah. I mean, AEW's got some real shit that they can get rid of. Brian Cage, can't stand him. Yeah. Yeah. Bang okay. average. <laughs> Always has been bang average. The look is terrible. Not good at all. No. Yeah, he's never done it for me either. Um, yeah, like um, QT Marshall. Is he still... QT Marshall, <laughs> yeah. Around? Yeah. Um, Big Show, is he still doing anything? Don't pull I think he's commentating on one of the dark shows. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of guys who are, I see on TV who I tend to skip. Um, even like, I like Jay Lethal a lot, but recently he's not really been doing a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like Jay Lethal as well, but again, you're right. Um, the TNT title it, picture, but it's not really doing it, doing it for me. No, see, why why put the TNT title back on Darby Allen? Yeah, strange. I don't I don't understand why they've done it. I don't I don't I don't get it. No, it just it just there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't make any sense. And although the wrestling is great and the shows are great because of the wrestling, there's no real sense of direction there with with AEW at the minute. And I feel like we're broken records with this every week. <laughs> Pretty much. Because the shows really are great and we're not trying to shit on it at all. It's just that there's no real direction. You know, just fuck Ring of Honor off. <laughs> right off. Get rid of it. Mm. Yeah. Because are you, are you like I said last week, are you really going to make a success of it? Yeah, they need a TV deal, which they're not going to get anytime soon. No, so, but, yeah. but are, are they really going to make a success of it? They need to they need to focus on making a success of AEW before they go trying to make make a success of Ring of Honor. Yeah, good point. Good point. You know, then then you have the likes of uh, Claudio in the main event yeah. wrestling for the AEW Championship because he can be a megastar. The guy's a complete freak of nature in yeah. terms of being an athlete. He's you know got that WWE experience of competing <clears throat> at a top tier. You know, you bring Miro in and you have yeah. him. Malachi Black is a world champion, in my opinion. Yep. All these all these guys have got so much about them. Yeah. And then you just not put him on TV. It's like Miro's not been on TV for ages. And he's like, he's like, the, what are you doing? <laughs> he's so good. Why aren't you using him? Bizarre. Yeah. And I just don't, I don't get it. I know that not everybody can be on TV at the same time. But I feel like they need to get rid of the rankings. I, th I feel like that's holding them back a lot. Yeah, true. I didn't like it in the first place. It was unique at the start. Cody Rhodes wanted wins and losses to matter, etc., etc. Now he's gone back to WWE where wins and losses do not matter in the slightest. <laughs> yep. It's professional wrestling. It's not a real sport. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. It do people want to see their favorites pushed. People want to see their favorites go after the championship. Exactly. <clears throat> As soon as they get the balance right with the divisions, I think you'll be plain sailing. Tony, bring us in. We'll, we'll, we'll sort it, okay? Yeah, bring us in. We'll sort it. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll do it work for you. Yeah. Put us on creative. We'll do it. We'll sort it. Pay us all yep. the money. And yeah, we'll figure it out. Yep, all the money. Pay us all the money. Put me on commentary. Yep. And uh, pay us all the money. We'll book. I'll commentate. It's fine. It's, you know, we'll, we'll fix it. Yeah. We'll sort it. <laughs> but 
again, AEW is very good every single week. The matches are very, very good. I just want more direction. I want more, you know, understanding as to who's doing what. Too many people running around in factions. The Jericho Appreciation Society is shit. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not, it's it's garbage. Man. Yeah. I'm bored of it. Everybody, like, you know, 2.0 is a tag team. That's fine. Let them be in the tag team division. Yeah. Do wrestling in a tag... If you want it to have a more of a sports style, you know, presentation, which was the original idea, you know, you, you could build such a phenomenal tag division there. But at the minute, you've got the acclaim to... I feel like I've run out of steam a little bit. And um, Billy Gunn's two lads, they're sort of having back and forth at the minute. Oh, yeah. Gunn's love. And I feel like the eventual thing is that Billy Gunn's going to turn on the acclaimed and go back with his kids, right? And they'll, they'll put the tag team titles on his kids. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It does, right? Yeah. I don't know. Samoa Joe, make him your world champion. Let him carry that fucking AEW world championship. Yeah, Samoa Joseph. Let him be the let him be the top heel in your company. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Problem solved. There you go. We've sorted it. Finn, is Cody Rose going to win the Royal Rumble? Yes. Okay, cool. There you go. That's that sorted. Uh, be in um, it. We'll be in it one or two. Go through the whole thing. You'll win. <coughs> you'll win. It'll definitely, yep. it'll definitely be in one or two because I want them to have the entrance. Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's, <coughs> it's set, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And then I honestly can't think of anyone else who could win it. I really can't. Unless uh, let's no. have Brock or Goldberg come back in. But no, no, please don't. I don't <laughs> see that. I don't see that happening. So Drew McIntyre, maybe. Maybe. I don't want that either. No, not really. Hasn't he already? He's won it, hasn't he already? Yeah, he won it in 2020. No, 2021. You, you've got to pull the trigger on Cody now, I think. Yeah. Like you it's said, not... so over, not even there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen. Um, I, I think either way, whether he wins the Royal Rumble or not, I think he walks out of WrestleMania with a championship. Yeah, I think so. They seem to be teasing splitting up the belts in some way. The tag team titles on Raw. Um, Next week, we've got the Usos versus Judgment Day for the Raw titles, specifically. I think, specifically the Raw titles. Yeah, I think that they yeah. had no more contendership tonight on SmackDown for the SmackDown ones for next week. So, okay. So, yeah. Well, I read something about a potential tournament for one of the championship, one of the main championships. Okay. And I guess it would be the Raw one, and mm. then Reigns would continue on SmackDown but still lose it. That makes sense. So there's some sort of like uh, bloodline ceremony next week on Raw 30 ah. or Raw Triple X. Nothing to do with Vin Diesel or porn. <laughs> um, and obviously, a lot of people are expecting The Rock there. But I saw something today. Uh, this is what the you know The Rock has apparently said that he doesn't think he'll be able to get into shape enough to wrestle a match against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania in the main event. Yeah, do I believe him? No, <laughs> I don't believe him in the absolute slightest. The guy's in ridiculous shape anyway. Yes, I know that ring shape is different to being hench as fuck. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure The Rock has known about this for a very long time. Yeah. And if every generation of the bloodline are going to be there, come on, Good you point. know? But yeah, as I say, it could be Cody Night 1, not G1 the Bumble, and then The Rock Night 2 for the other title or something. Which means you'll win. Yeah, that makes sense. That's fine. Yeah, I'll be yeah, that's that. fine. Have yeah, Reigns is then the head of the table. We don't see the Rock again. Rain, Roman Reigns is the champion. Loses it to the Miz the night after or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. After all that. Um, but I'd be surprised if Reigns didn't leave with at least one championship from WrestleMania. But at the same time, uh, I feel like it's time now to pull the trigger on him losing the belts especially if he wants to take some time off hell have him lose it to Sami Zayn I would fucking love that yeah that'd be awesome I'd, yeah that'd be huge I love Sami the, the biggest face pop in wrestling in WWE history would be if Sami won that championship at Wrestlemania oh yeah it'd be absolutely huge maybe Sami could win the Wimble there you go uh, hey look I'm not against it and then um, I can't remember if we talked about so, the, yeah, the thing I saw was they were going to have a potentially a tournament. Because we spoke about the Elimination Chamber last week, didn't we? And how oh, they yeah. could sort of use that um, to somehow sort of figure out one of the contenders for the for one of the titles. Mm. But I read that 
and again, take this with a pinch of salt because it was from a bullshit fucking news site. Do they they could have a tournament in the lead up to WrestleMania? Uh, like they'll take one of the belts off Reigns, and then two people will f- wrestle for it at WrestleMania. Interesting. Makes sense. But uh, who knows? I you know I don't know what to believe. I mean, I think we'll have a better idea following Raw <laughs> and then following the Royal Rumble because you can easily sow the seeds or at least start to sow the seeds for the Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania on Monday. Yeah. It's sense. all set up perfectly. The WWE have just started to put um, brand new Rock merchandise on the WWE shop. Ah, uh, okay. Happy and they've started yeah. to upload ro- more Rock matches to their YouTube. Uh, that's true. I've seen that. Mm, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So come on, the rock's like, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to get into ring shape. That that would be somebody f- feeding the the dirt sheets <laughs> bullshit to try and take them off the scent. Pretty much, yeah. But I'm not having it. Yeah, it's the rock. He can get ring shape in like a week. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> he can stand off the sofa and be in ring shape. Yeah, pretty much. So it's uh, yeah. I love the Raw and Ball. I love the build up to WrestleMania. Um, and I'm super excited Me for too. everything that's to come. Cool. Now, honestly, I'll get, I'll get honestly see uh, the Judgment Day getting the titles off. Do we say it's next week? It's is a, it Priest shot. and Dominic, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's a long shot, I know, but it, I just, I don't know, Judgment Day's on the world, been on the world lately. And uh, if the one that's split those titles up, having it happen on the 30th anniversary, it'd be a pretty big deal. Be a huge deal. And it, it's weird. It's, it's like heel versus heel. But then... Sort of. But I think, yeah. again, they're going down that comedy route with Dominic that's going to turn the Judgment Day into some sort of face. <laughs> Maybe, And yeah. Rhea is super over. Yeah, true. But, uh, yeah. But I think there's going to be an inevitable, inevitable, inevitable uh, match with Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley versus Edge and Beth Phoenix. That's like a storyline that's still up in the air mm. somewhere. That might be a wrestling yeah. thing. Yeah, I can see that. And then you have the Judgment Day Whilst as champions, the... or the other two champions. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I can see that, and I'd be, you know, <clears throat> be more than up for that. It's, it's time yeah. for a little bit of change now. Yeah, definitely. It's been a you know they've put all their stock in the bloodline over the last year or so, and it's been great. It really has been great. Yeah. But yeah, it's now time to sort of move on from it and go a different direction. Yes, I agree. But I will, I will say this, Triple H has done a phenomenal job of making the United States Championship feel important on uh, Raw and the Intercontinental Championship important on SmackDown whilst Reigns hasn't been actively defending the championships. So those two titles have taken centre stage and they've done a f- phenomenal job with them. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, on Raw, it's going to be uh, Austin Theory versus uh, Lashley again for the title, which would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, the, I read the direction they're going in for Mania is Austin Theory versus Cena. Yeah, I saw that. That could be fun. Yeah, I'm in. I'm, I'm into that as well. Or yeah. They could have it like almost like a passing the torch sort of thing. Have theory win. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Because why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, if we none of these things are going to happen because we've said them. Yeah. So. Uh, Goldberg in the Rumble. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, be Cena versus I don't know, Shawn Michaels or something. <laughs> 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 Yeah, from the backup retirement again. Yep, and yeah, that'd be great. Cody will be, Cody will be eliminated first. Yep, <laughs> comes in first, thrown out straight away by whoever's number two. Yeah, the Miz, Seth Rollins. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh yeah, WWE 2K 23 probably going to get revealed at the Rumble. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, March 14th release date for the. Uh, like the Super Edition, um, right. March seventeenth release for the Standard Edition. Yeah, sounds about right. Similar to what they did last year. So it's going to be John, John Cena on the front cover. Mm-hmm. It's probably going to be like his showcase mode, like it was raised last year. Yeah, which is fine. For sure. And where's AEW Fight Forever? Still in limbo. We have no idea. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Um, I think that's about it, really. There we go. Yeah, We've got a good hour and a half for everyone to enjoy today. We yes. hope you have enjoyed what has been episode number 167 
of the Games and Grouse podcast. And of course, we are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash games wraps. Go find us on all the socials, both individually and as a collective. And we'll be back next week with uh, not only a brand new podcast, but also the pre-show before the pre-show. My name is Sunny G and I've been here with Finn Steele. Thank you. And we will see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Very vision. <laughs>